take a moment, introduce yourself to the commission, and tell us why you want to be a judge. Certainly, thank you. Give me a second to get my prepared remarks. First of all, thank you uh, for this opportunity to discuss my qualifications for county court judge. Uh, my first experience with the judicial system came when I was seven years old. My father was driving his car when he was struck by a drunk driver. The resulting accident caused him catastrophic injuries that required two years of rehabilitation before I could properly walk again. My pregnant mother, my brothers, and I were at the sentencing hearing for the criminal drive, charge of driving while intoxicated. Unfortunately, there were no other criminal statutes at the time that provided for more severe penalties if injuries occurred during an accident that was caused by drunk driving. The judge apologized to my mother and my family for being limited to only sentencing the defendant to a $100 fine because that was the maximum penalty he could impose. His sincere empathy and concern provided a degree of comfort in a difficult situation and it made a deep impression on me. That injustice and its consequences to my family has motivated me all my life to pursue a career in criminal justice, to right the wrong a family endured. It explains in part my career as an investigator in the prosecutor's office, a prosecutor, and a sheriff. The Latin root of the word justice meant, means to make right, and I've attempted to do so in my law enforcement and legal career. I believe I possess a unique set of skills and experiences that make me the most qualified candidate in the candidate pool. First, I've been a resident of this county for 20 years, serving as sheriff and as a member of the Flagler County Rotary Board, the Advent Hospital Foundation Board, and I'm presently on the Flagler County Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. I believe residency should be a thresh threshold issue for any candidate you recommend or select. I do not believe there's any sitting county court judges in any county that were not a resident of that county for some period of time before they ran or were appointed. As far as I know, all county court judges have been flagged upon county residents before being appointed or elected. There are multiple qualified candidates from this county who have applied for this position, and to select any other, in my opinion, would be against precedent and injustice to flag of county residents and the flag of R. Second, my position as sheriff has provided me with the experience of making important discretionary decisions on arrests and prosecutions that are similar to those made by county court judges every day. I also have an understanding of courthouse security that is essential due to our country's current issues with workplace violence and the sensitivity of people and issues that involve the courthouse on a daily basis. Due to the large, multifaceted law enforcement organization that I manage, I have the ability and experience to manage the public, the courtroom security, court personnel, and the court's calendar. As sheriff, as sheriff I developed a good rec working relationship with Judge Disser, and together we created with other stakeholders the pretrial release program, which has been so effective in this county. We also worked to create and implement other diversion programs and better the criminal justice system in the county as members of the Flagler County Criminal Justice Coordinating Committee. As a prosecutor, defense attorney, and civil attorney, I've tried multiple jury and non-jury trials and understand intimately the rules of evidence, jury selection, and proper court etiquette. As an attorney for local municipalities, I've had experience with county and city ordinance enforcement issues that make their way onto the court's calendar. In my approximately 40 years of experience in the judicial system, I've spent 25 years in public service and 15 years in private practice. I believe this balance grants me a unique perspective as a judge. I presently have a general practice consisting of family law, trust in estates, landlord and tenant matters, along with other real estate issues, and civil litigation. I have extensive experience in running for office, which is essential as this will ultimately be an elected position. I also have the election skills to run an effective campaign. Although I take responsibility for my actions, I'd like to comment on the Ethics Commission investigation I'm sure is an issue. Um, and I'd like to say that it was unfair, unjust, political in nature, and was a learning experience. Having spent my entire life investigating others, it was unusual to say the least to be on the other end. The bottom line, this was about an accounting error that the Sheriff's Office Chief Financial Officer made that she would not take responsibility for and the interpretation of what the word consecutive meant. There were two Ethics Commission advocates who recommended that no charges be brought. They were each replaced after making their recommendation and a third advocate who had a very clear agenda was appointed. I learned a lot from the experience and I believe those lessons would assist my judicial decisions by allowing for a healthy amount of skepticism in all matters before me. To summarize, I have a long history of public and community service and uniquely qualified for this position. I hope to earn your recommendation. 
Mr. Manfrey, I have a concern um, that arose after the application um, period, and that was that you discussed um, your party registration or your, your no party affiliation registration um, with a member of the media, and it was printed in the Daytona Beach News Journal. Um, I have some concern because candidates for judicial office aren't allowed to disclose um, how they're registered. And so I, I'm sort of wondering how that conversation came about and um, um, whether you think you know, being an applicant makes you a candidate for judicial office bound by the canons. Yes, of course I do. It was a, it was, I was called by the news journal um, and the, the, uh, the question that was posed by the journalist was why do I believe I have an opportunity uh, given the fact that the governor is, is uh, a Republican and I'm a Democrat? And I responded to that question. But I understand your, your issue. It's too late on Other questions from the commission? Mr. Manfred, you probably arguably one of the more polarizing figures in Flagler County. Uh, you've been elected to office twice. Uh, you've been unelected twice. With a, you know, this we're a qualifications you know committee, so we always have concerns when, you know, uh, I give you an example. Is it Stephen Delaroche? He was a judge. Um, was found to have committed some ethics violations, and he's been before us several times. We've never put him through. Why should we put you through? Well, first of all, I, I disagree that it was a polarizing figure. Um, uh, while I was a sheriff, you know, we accomplished a lot when I was sheriff. You know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate part of the political process is that um, people remember the worst and don't remember the, the, the best. Um, while I was the sheriff, we had no use of force incidents. We implemented body cameras from the first sheriff's office. I built three buildings. Every single officer went through de-escalation. De we had no complaints. So from the public's perspective, that was not a polarizing thing. We dropped crime every, every year. We lowered, we kept our budget within the strength. Um, so that's, you know, th that to me is what you should base your decision on, that I was an effective sheriff, I've been an effective member of the bar. The Ethics Commission, in my opinion, is a political organization. It's not a true ethics commission. Um, I've seen it repeatedly used for political purposes. Um, and it was clear in my instance, um, my attorney who was Rumberg, who was one of the best attorneys, told me that it was unprecedented what they were doing today. Even after the hearing, um, the advocate came to me and the investigator came and apologized for what they put me through because it was for politics. So again, politics is part of this. Um, if that's what you, you judge it by, then I understand what you're saying. Um, but you, you know, we are attorneys. Our job is to look at, at both sides. Um, and in my opinion, my overall record has been, um, has been very positive for this community. I took, up, took over Sheriff's Office twice which I did not have to do. I was asked by deputies to do it. People ask me all the time. It's, I was literally asked by the deputies to come in and clean up messes. And I think I did it effectively both times and put the officers back on track. And those are the things I would ask you to think of as opposed to what I believe was a political, and I can go through all the details if you want me to, of how silly this investigation was. And, uh, um, and yeah, obviously it had repercussions on me getting reelected. Uh, but we, quite frankly to you, I'm happy being an attorney. The sheriff was always a public service commitment. It was not what I came here to do when I first moved to Florida. Um, and I'm happy in my role at now. And my path always, and by the way, you should know this, is that I was running for judgeship the last time Judge Attic retired. I was literally going to pick up the cards when I was accosted by a group of deputies who said that the former sheriff was getting in, in trouble and that you needed to delay your decision because after you heard what he, would, he had gone through, that I may change my decision. I literally changed my decision, probably would have a pretty good chance to be uh, the county court judge uh, seven years ago, um, and did that because um, I was asked to do by the community. So I think that uh, those are the things that, you know, and I understand your concern, I'm not minimizing that, but I think as, you know, as attorneys, we're supposed to balance what occurred. Um, and I think my record of public service outweighs the, this political attack that I had endured as the sheriff. Is your, is your intent to run for the seat if we don't if we don't send you forward to the governor and the governor doesn't appoint you? Is your intention to run for this down the road? I don't know. I mean, that's that's I 
I can't say no and I can't say yes. I mean, but it does depend probably on who you choose. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I will be honest with you, if it's not a flat, it's not me or a Flathead County resident, I'm pretty sure I would run because I think that would really be unfair. Um, but uh, it also, you know, I have a, a wife and you know, a spouse and I don't do anything as, as any of you uh, without discussing it with you. And, you know, the political process is a political process. I've run five times here in, uh, in Flathead County and uh, whether I go through another process would be a discussion I'd have with my family. You're, um, you know, very involved outside of work in this county. Can you talk a little bit about your um, not being an elected office, but the other things you do to give back to the community? Well, I was I was Rotarian for 22 years, um, and we did a lot of uh, a lot of different things uh, in Rotary. Um, I'm, I'm on the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. We try to uh, help small businesses, but the thing I'm most proud of doing is I'm a member of my social justice ministry in my church at San Marie Del Mar in Flagler Beach. And I have been, when I'm not sheriff, a pro bono attorney dealing with uh, um, spousal abuse. Um, and I spend a lot of my time um, taking questions on, on those issues um, uh, from, from people in, you know, without money and without, um, without any uh, you know, effective means of dealing with this situation. Um, in our social justice ministry, we, we do a lot of things in trying to affect change. We have a uh, we have a high school GED program that we have in the jail that I'm, I'm an advisor to to our committee. Um, we also do uh, you know uh, uh, food collection for the poor. Um, we're against uh, capital punishment, so our, our group goes out and uh, uh, protests whenever there's a, a, a capital uh, punishment act. So those are things that are near and dearest to me, are those things. And uh, um, I also work with LEAP, uh, Law Enforcement Action Project. It's a national group of judges, prosecutors, defense attorneys, law enforcement that advocate for criminal justice reform. I think we're in the best position we've ever been in this country in terms of how we're dealing with criminal defendants and trying to divert people out of it. Um, I also work with the ACLU on criminal justice reform and the Florida Sheriff's Association. I worked with Representative Paul Renner on a bill that got passed on criminal justice reform. It was a good first step act. Um, so I continue to use my, my, my experience, my skills, uh, and my advocacy uh, to try to help the criminal justice system. Have you um, thought about some ways that you were um, appointed to this position that you would improve the speed um, with the docket? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it really has been a mess. I mean, for this county to have endured uh, one county judge, court judge, for the past 10 years when it was very clear that we were Judge Attic and now Judge Disler were clearly um, overwhelmed by that. And they've done incredible work, um, Judge Attic and Judge Disler. I don't think they get enough credit um, for what they've done. But it's managing that docket. We all know with the old attorneys, we go into docket courts that are properly run and organized and, and the calendar gets done and, and others that aren't. Um, where it takes so much longer to, to get a, a hearing or get on the trial calendar. And it affects people downstream. Um, so one of the things, as someone who is an organized individual, will have 300 employees and ran a multifaceted organization, I know how to organize things. And I think what I always try to do as sheriff and as an attorney is have a good bedside manner. Um, and I think that's really important in courts. You walk into court and you immediately know that judge has control and is empathetic to the people in there. Because other than the people getting paid, no one really wants to be in that courtroom. Um, and I think it's really important to, for a judge to move that docket is to explain to uh, everyone in that courtroom how he intends to, to work his docket and try to find effective means. Um, and one of the things in, you know, in the calendar is you know, trying to create, and I know Tom Vexen very well, you know, know each other well, is working with the court clerks. They do incredible work too and try to make uh, that system one as, uh, work as effectively as it can uh, in their, um, their, you know, uh, their workload. So I think there's a lot of ways that can be done, but simply by having another court judge, kind of court judge, you're gonna hopefully cut you know, um, Judge Disla's work in half and make her more effective, and the county court judge who uh, was appointed will be more effective because that workload is not shared. Um question that I've seen brought forward maybe at the next level. If there was a city ordinance that said, a fictitious ordinance, fictitious park, no vehicles, 
in the park. Uh, and an ambulance comes to the park to, uh, for you know, legitimate purposes to treat somebody that say who's having a heart attack, and they drive into the park, and they're cited with a civil citation or a county ordinance citation, city citation, for having a vehicle in the park. What are you going to do as a judge with that type of case? I'm not sure that statute would stand constitutional rigor, but um, uh, of course I would, you know, uh, if that was the case, if that was the fact that I would um, gently call up the attorney for the, the city and explain to them that uh, uh, I would want them to brief me on why that statute would be constitutional. I want to know uh, what the background is on, and what the public purpose of having a statute that would apply to emergency vehicles. Because um, you could apply to an ambulance, I guess you could apply to a, a law enforcement vehicle as well. So uh, I would want to I would want to know the basis for something like that and the new law the legality of it. Um, and uh, I would obviously listen to both sides and, and make a determination. But it does seem that that would be uh, that would be hard to uh, to legally uh, substantiate uh, a public safety reason for that. Did you say you would call up the city attorney? No, I would not call up. I mean, obviously, if the case is before me, I'm going to call up okay. on the bench. Okay. And I would, I'd want to hear, you know, an offer of proof of why the statute is constitutional. Uh, not, you know, call them up outside the, uh, the legal process. I, I noticed in your application there were, you, you've tried about 20 jury trials. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of questions to list cases you've tried to a verdict or, uh, six most significant cases and you didn't have any that you listed and i was wondering well i mean you why. asked because a lot of information was asked i mean most of my trial work occurred when i was a prosecutor um, my trial work had been limited to um, you know uh, family law cases and landlord and tenant cases um, but because i've been my career has been broken up when i've been in florida i've been an attorney here in florida for um, almost 16 years but it keeps on being broken up by these, these uh, areas of the sheriff's office. So it takes a while to get your trial calendar going and get your cases back on. So I really haven't tried anything significant that I would be willing to talk about. Um, I'm happy to talk about my cases. Um, I mean, the one that I'm most proud of was I would have, uh, was the first DNA case at a Fry hearing uh, back in 1989. It was the first time DNA was accepted as expert testimony in the state of New York. So. Uh, and that was, that was a huge case. It took months and months of preparation to get paid off for the hearing. And, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, I can go on and on. I, I did a lot of cases that I'm very proud of as, as a prosecutor, but unfortunately, they really aren't, I, um, you, know, uh, you know, close enough that I had that information that was being asked in that question. I don't have, didn't have, you know, the, the opposing counsel in all those positions. So that's the way I answered it that way. Any other questions for any last thoughts you want to leave us with? Again, I, uh, I, I will make the last pitch for, you know, for someone being uh, selected from this county. I think it's, uh, I know there's a lot of qualified candidates. Um, I just think it would be, you know, terrible injustice. And it really is, you know, we are, we are creatures of precedent. Um, that's everything that we argue is what is the, the court's done in, in the past. And I think uh, this committee and also the governor, he was, he was an attorney, I know the governor, um, appreciates the importance of precedent, and the importance for the public to have some um, uh, some trust in the decision. And I think it would be, I don't think the public would react very well to an appointment of someone outside this, uh, outside this county. I think they would perceive it as I would and most people would. I have a question. Sure. Uh, assuming the governor uh, looks at, let's say there's two final candidates, one's from outside this county, uh, and one is from inside this county, but the determination is made that the one outside the county is more qualified for whatever reason. You believe that that person should not be appointed and that the, the okay, jurisdiction I'm, is... I'm an advocate, so you know, the governor gets to appoint. You guys get to recommend. That's the process. I mean, I'm not telling anybody what to do, and certainly it's not my authority to. But as attorneys, we advocate for positions, and I'm advocating for this position to the extent that you hear me out and perhaps the governor does, you know, perhaps uh, I can, you know, influence the decision, but 
Um, whatever the governor does is lawful. Whatever you do is lawful. Uh, I'm not making any opinions on that, but this is my position as an advocate for Flagler County. We, there's a place I've lived for the past 20 years. It's a place I intend to, to die in. And I think that this is an important decision. It really is. I mean, it's not the typical county court judge. It's something this community has wanted for a long time. Um, public officials have have gone to uh, Tallahassee for almost a decade, you know, begging for this position. And it's been in the budget, but it's been, you know, uh, taken out. And it's a big deal to Flagler County. I mean, I know it's not in Volusia or St. John's or Putnam where this, these cases this kind of issue does not come up. But residents feel, you know, the impact of um, having the, you know, the, the court be so overburdened. And we all love Judge Disler, and she is active in our community. And, you know, we, we don't think it's fair that she's had to handle three times the night calendar that she has. And she does it without complaint, right? She does, for anyone who knows her. But I think the residents are sensitive to this, and I think it's more than the typical issue that, that we probably have to be I'm just bringing it to your attention and don't mean to, you know, uh, say that there's uh, anything untoward of whatever decision you make in the government makes. That's clearly the, the jurisdiction. Thank you, Mr. Manley. Thank you very much.